Welcome to chapter 18 of the book of First Samuel. David, in the past chapter, uh, killed Goliath, became famous throughout all the people, as we see right here. It says, and it came to pass as he finished speaking to Saul, that is David, that the soul of Jonathan was bound together to Saul, to the soul of David. And Jonathan, as we found out was before, was uh, the son of Saul, who fought the Philistines. And now these two men uh, become friends. Now, it says, and Jonathan loved him according to his own soul. And Saul received him in that day and did not allow him to return to the house of his father. So after killing Goliath, now he is being taken and uh, put under the tutelage of Saul and the men and not allowed to go back. And Jonathan and David ordained a covenant, for he loved him according to his soul. And Jonathan took off the outer garment upon him and gave it to David and his uniform, even unto his broadsword and the bow and his belt. Now, these they were uh, warriors. Now, some people would try to make this into a homosexual relationship, which uh, I could see where if somebody was, they would try to use this in that purpose. But uh, soldiers become tied to each other when they're uh, fighting. And the army doesn't mean that they are gay uh, or homosexuals. They uh, bond together. They do a, a wonderful things in fighting um, two men rather than one. Uh, because of the, this bond that they have between them. And you uh, read about one soldier being killed when the other one is left and how much the person is devastated. Even the rest of his life, he'll remember his buddy. So I think this is what uh, this kind of relationship, because it's talking about his uniform and broadsword. And David uh, went forth perceiving in all whatever Saul sent him. And Saul placed him over the men of war. And he pleased in the eyes of all the people, and also even in the eyes of the bondmen of Saul. So he was a well-liked person. And it came to pass in his entering, uh, when David returned striking the Philistine, that the women came forth, joining in a dance and singing, to meet Saul the king, from out of all the cities of Israel with tambourines. You can add that to your English derivatives book. Timpani, so timpani. Um, it's like a drum, an instrument you beat on, same as a tambourine. And then with joyfulness and with kimvalis, uh, symbol, transliteration. And the women took the lead playing and said, Saul struck his thousands and David his ten thousands. Let me get this adjusted. And so they, <laughs> this is what begins the downward spiral of the relationship between David and Saul. Saul was provoked to anger. And the thing appeared an exceedingly sorry state before Saul concerning this word. And he said, well, they gave to David the ten thousands, and to me they gave thousands. And what is there to him besides the kingdom? He's becoming popular. Saul was jealous, worried about his being king. And Saul was suspecting David from that day and beyond, which is interesting that Saul was suspecting David, but yet throughout the whole period of these chapters from David and Saul. David loved Saul, respected Saul, could have killed him at any time, well, not any time, a few times, and didn't. And his heart was pure towards, uh, towards Saul. Now, the jealousy that Saul had, uh, there was a, a movie called uh, Paris, Texas, where a man suspected 
his wife of doing all sorts of things, and he became very jealous, and to finally it ruined their relationship. And this jealousy uh, is like a canker sore. It just starts eating away at a person. So it came to pass of the next day that a ferocious spirit fell upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of his house. And David strummed with his hand as according to each day, and the wooden spear was in the hand of Saul. Now Saul prophesying doesn't mean it was good. Uh, It was a ferocious spirit from God, exactly. Uh, Pony roan is the word, evil, bad. Uh, In chapter 16, we talked about that, of different types of spirits uh, on the negative side. Um, We have the spirit of wrath, um, Genesis 4.27, spirit of uh, jealousy, another spirit, uh, an evil spirit, Judges 9.24. Here, a ferocious spirit. And he prophesied in the midst of his house. Now, what did he didn't say what he prophesied? Could have been something that was not of God. And David strummed with his hand as according to each day. And the wooden spear was in the hand of Saul. And Saul lifted the wooden spear and said, I will strike him to David and into the wall. And David turned aside from his presence twice. So apparently he threw it at him. And Saul feared Ephovithi, the phobe, phobia, from the face of David, for the Lord was with him and left from Saul. Now, the book of um, Hebrews goes into this quite a bit about a person that has the Spirit of God in him, but yet uh, he can leave God at any time if he wants, and the warnings of this. And I believe Peter also goes into this. So this God's Spirit can leave a person. Uh, this once saved, always saved is just something that was made up. There's no place in the Bible that really uh, says that. You cannot lose your um, deliverance, as I call it, not salvation, but the deliverance is a process. Uh, you can, uh, can't lose it, and nobody can take it away from you. If God is delivering you to be with him, then that's wonderful. Nobody can take it away, but a person can leave, and apparently God can also, uh, if the person does leave God, as it mentions in Hebrews, I wish I knew, wrote down the chapter, it's towards the end, I believe, second last chapter, uh, then um, God's Spirit uh, here it left. And Saul removed him from himself and placed him to himself as David as a commander of a thousand. And he went forth and entered before the people. I'm not sure who that he would be, David or Saul, but I guess it doesn't matter. And David was uh, perceiving in all his ways, and the Lord was with him, not like Saul who disobeyed God in a few places. Now, it doesn't mean that David does everything perfectly, but uh, at this point of time, the Spirit, God, was with David. And Saul beheld as he perceived exceedingly and was cautious of his person. So Saul saw there was, you know, God was blessing him and um, he was cautious of what he was going to do around David because he was uh, worried about him. And all Israel and Judah loved David, for he entered and went forth before the face of the people. Now, maybe the um, Saul maybe didn't go in front of the people. And uh, today, uh, in the um, this is uh, June the 9th, they, in the United States, I don't know about other countries, but we have a person that's the president who is very popular. A lot of people, thousands of people come out to see him, and he makes himself known. And the election for the next presidency is going on. It'll be another five months. And the man who's running against him is basically hiding. Uh, He's not coming out right now. We're having the uh, uh, coronavirus scare, so people aren't um, 
mixing as much. And this man who's running is pretty much staying to himself, not going in front of the people. Now, I'm not taking one person's side or another. I'm just mentioning how the rulers uh, can be popular. It doesn't mean he's doing the right thing or he's better than the other person. But uh, anyway, that David became a popular person. And Saul said to David, Behold, my daughter, the elder Merob, I will give her to you for a wife. Only become to me for a son of power like a warrior and wage war of the battles of the Lord. Not his battles, but the battles of the Lord. And Saul said, Let not my hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. So Saul was basically wanting him to become a warrior so he would be killed. And Saul would be able to uh, get rid of somebody as he perceived as being a, um, um, what's the word for it? Um, Can't think of it. Somebody that wants his uh, job. And David said to Saul, Who am I in the humbleness of David? And what is the life of the kin of my father in Israel, that I should be an in-law of the king? We're nobody. How can I be somebody like that, humble? And it came to pass in the time of the giving Merob, daughter of Saul, to David, that he, Saul, gave her to Adriel, the Meholothite, for a wife. It doesn't say why, but anyway, so now he doesn't get this woman, but God has a plan. Uh, And uh, my Michal, Melchol, the daughter of Saul, loved David. Now later it changes. She she despises him. Uh, We'll get into that a little bit here. And it was reported to Saul, and The thing was pleasing in his eyes. He's, okay, now the other daughter. Saul said, I will give her to him, and she shall be to him for an obstacle. And the hand of the Philistines shall be upon him. Now, this daughter be an obstacle. Apparently, uh, he knew his daughter pretty well. And for some reason, uh, he knew that she uh, would be um, do maybe what he wanted to. Uh, her to do. He had control of Mich- Michal, uh, Michal. And so she would do what he wanted, and he she could be an obstacle. And Saul said to David a second time, Well, you shall lie to me by marriage today. And Saul gave charge to his servants, saying, You speak in private to David, saying, Behold, uh, the king's want is towards you. And all his servants love you, and thus you be allied by marriage to the king. Imperative. So uh, this is what he gets them to do. And the servants of Saul spoke into the ears of David these things. And David said, oh, Is it the light thing in your eyes to be allied by marriage to the king? And I, a humble man, and not esteemed? And the servants of Saul reported to him, according to these words with David spoke. David being humble, and who am I to be a wife, um, a husband to your daughter? And Saul said, well, thus you, <coughs> excuse me, say to David, the king does not want a dowry. So he did, because he was poor, he didn't have any money for a dowry where you would give the woman this money, more or less, uh, what are they, um, alimony in advance, I heard. Somebody called it. Excuse me again. <coughs> but I don't want a dowry, but only a hundred foreskins of the Philistines to avenge against the enemies of the king. So again, he's hoping David will get killed. But uh, all he wants <coughs> is if David goes out and gets the foreskins uh, from the male uh, unit. <laughs> I doubt if they cut the foreskins off of the unit, but they uh, probably cut the whole thing off and then just put them in a bag. Kind of gross, but uh, these people did different things back in those days. And Saul devised to put David into the hands of the Philistines. Hopefully he would be killed. David did the same thing with Uriah the Hittite, the husband of uh, 
Bathsheba. And the servants of Saul told to David these things, but, you know, the hundred foreskins. And the word was straightened in the eyes of David, sounded good, to be allied by marriage to the king. And the days were not fulfilled. And David rose up and went, he and his men, and struck among the Philistines two hundred men. And he brought their foreskins and fulfilled them to the king and becomes allied by marriage to the king. So he gets Michal. And Saul gives to him Michal, his daughter, for a wife. And Saul beheld, and he knew that the Lord was with David. And Michal, his daughter, and all Israel loved him. But it changes later. Oh, how the love of a man and a woman uh, can be so, and then all of a sudden something can happen, and it can change, uh, sometimes instantly. Something can uh, set it off, and the person uh, become detests the other person, one husband or the wife, or the wife or the husband. And Saul proceeded to fear from before David still. And Saul became hating David all the days. So that's kind of sad because David loved Saul. And the rulers of the Philistines came forth. And it came to pass from uh, their fit expedition that David perceived above all the bondmen of Saul, and his name was greatly esteemed. So David becomes a successful warrior, general more or less, to David. But things will change and get, and the relationship gets worse with uh, Saul's attitude uh, getting uh, worse and bad. We'll find out about that in chapter 19, and I hope you'll join us. Till then, God bless.